Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, we are going to continue with our warehouse model. So, step six, model footing pads centered on grid intersections. Uh, it's talking about uh, the footing pads, actually these ones here, the footing pads, which are on the underside footing level. So, I'm going to go to the correct level, underside footing level here. Uh, so, do you see that we see grids 1 to 4, but we don't see grid A to B? The reason is in section 1, I moved uh, the extension of this grid down. However, we should also do that on the other view. So, how about I go, let's say, to West Elevation. Uh, we have the grid side here, right? First, let's not crop the view here. I'm going to select the grid, get the bottom of it. Because the bottom of the grid is above underside footing level, it's not going to show it, so I'm going to move this down. Now, if I go to underside footing, I see all my grids. So, let's go with footing. I'm just going to check what dimension we have. It seems that it's 1400 by 1400 based on the sections uh, and it seems that the depth of it is 350. So I'm gonna go with um, structure maybe and I'm gonna go with isolated. 1400 by 1400 by 350 is right on the level underside footing. I want to go with at grids uh, I want to select all the grids, finish, that's all. It says you don't see it, why? I want to go with VR, view range. This is our lowest level, so for the bottom and depths, I'll go with unlimited, apply, OK. If you still don't see them, it's because here where we have the topography, if I hit HH and hide it, it's actually there, but because we have not uh, taken care of the topography yet, we don't see it. But it's correct here, if I go to section, if I click here and go with HH, uh, you see that it's also correct here. You can also check it on the 3D view. HH, why do I use HH? HH does the temporarily hiding, so uh, it hides something temporarily, which is kind of like if I go here, go with hide element. So, uh, the footings are good. We're going to continue with the next level. Step 6 is done. Step 7, model concrete piers using architecture columns 16 by 16 on all uh, grid intersections. You notice that for both step 6 and 7, we're going to put them at grid intersections. What is this talking about? Let me go to the section. This is the 610 that you see on the section. This is the uh, architecture column that helps us fill this gap between the footing and the column. So, we're going to have the column on the footing level it's going to go up to level 1, however, we have an offset of 450 minus 450 uh, from level 1, right? So, I'm going to go to underside footing. I'm going to go with this time architecture column. Actually, I want to go with here, architectural columns. 16 by 16 is good. Uh, it doesn't have the at grid option, so uh, because I don't have the at grid option, you, you see that for architectural column, I don't have the option. I just need to draw it here. Uh, and again, we don't see it. I put one column here, we don't see it. Let's see it on section. It is actually here. Uh, and we actually, we wanted to have an offset in comparison to level one. And if you remember, that offset was 450. You can see it here, you can also see it in this callout here, that from level 1 to the top of that uh, concrete base is 450. Between that 450 and 400, we're going to have a plate here and then there's a structural steel column. So, that means this section, um, in this section, to the top offset, I want to assign negative 450. That's exactly what we want. So let's get back to underside footing. Now I see it, right? 
okay so I wanna copy it maybe first here now I wanna select both 16 columns and I wanna copy them all over there should be eight of them in total which is absolutely correct uh, I'm gonna continue with step 8 uh, which is 200 perimeter foundation wall as indicated so these are the foundation walls let's see the section you see it's right below the wall that we're gonna draw soon so it's um, this found this is the foundation wall and it goes from underside footing to level 1 I'm gonna draw it in level 1 I'm gonna go with wall 200 millimeters I'm going to set this to finish face exterior. Uh, I would like to go with underside footing up to level 1. And I'm going to go with a rectangle. Oh, actually change it again. So I'm going to go from underside footing to level 1. Click here. And click here. It says you don't see it here. That is true. So if I go to my underside footing I see it actually on this view and if I go to my section this is exactly what we wanted and it's exactly aligned with our exterior boundary of the building and the wall is just going to be on top of it also on this end if I see it on 3D uh, by the way I, I used HH or uh, hide element from here to temporarily hide the topo this is our foundation wall what we need is also a linear foundation right below this wall so under structure we're gonna go with wall we have 500 by 200 footing what is it it's basically this line that you see here you see the thickness is 200 and the width is 500 is that linear foundation under the wall so I'm gonna it's waiting for me to click on the wall I'm gonna hover the mouse here hit tab one click you see that uh, the rest of the linear foundation is created if I go to section 1 this is just what we created right now okay let's continue model 150 slab within the foundation wall is gonna be on level 1 this is our floor so I'm gonna go with level 1 in level 1 I would like to see the view below that right when nothing is selected the properties shows the properties of the view I'm gonna go to the underlay change this to underside footing now in light gray I see where the footing goes we want the slab inside it so architecture floor I think it was 150 150 slab so change it to 150 I'm gonna go with a rectangle inside to inside of the foundation wall which is going to be here. Attach it, I would go with don't attach section one, check it. Here, this is what we have here, and it's exactly starting from inside the foundation wall. So we are good here, let's continue. Modify existing topo by adding points at the corner of the building and 200 or 2000 millimeters away and the elevation is negative 200 so this time we are modifying the topography maybe I can go to the site plan let's close some of the inactive views uh, I'm gonna make here a bit clear I'm gonna keep the exterior reference plane the interior one we just needed it to know where the grid goes so I can erase them okay from those reference planes 
which show the boundary of the project, we want to have an offset of 2 meters. So I'm going to go with RP, pick the line, offset by 2000. I need some new reference planes. Over there, click on the outside of the reference planes and I need to move this a little bit lower, move this a, bit, a little bit lower. So then I want to go with selecting the topography, edit the surface. I'm going to open my 3D view, site view, WT and 3D view. Uh, how about I reset this one? So what we're going to do is we're going to add some points, right? Uh, if I click on one of these points, for instance this one, you see the elevation of this point is 31 and a half meters. What is this elevation? This is absolute elevation, which means it's from the sea level, right? What are we going to do? We are going to use relative elevation, which is relative to our zero, which is our level one. And we're going to add some points which is uh, relatively negative 200 millimeters, again relative to level 1, and on the corners and 2 meters away from the corners. So I want to place new points where this, this originally is uh, set to absolute elevation. And I changed it to relative to the surface. Relative to surface is going to consider it relative to our grade and relative to zero we're going to go with negative 200. We're going to place four points on the four corners. One, as soon as I click here on the four corners, you see that some adjustments are made here on the topography. Last one, I'm going to click it and you're going to see the changes there. Right. Also, 2 meter away, we want it to be negative 200. One click there, one click there, one there, and one more here. And I want to finish the surface. Just to show you, if I hadn't set it to relative, if it was an absolute, if I clicked somewhere, suddenly it's totally outside of what we are looking for because it's relative to sea level. So I'm going to go with Ctrl Z. The rest of it is good. Finish the surface. Okay, we are good with topography. And we're just going to need a 200 millimeter building pad under the slab. What does this building pad do? It shows where the excavations finish. In my site plan, I would prefer to take care of the building pad. And building pad is under massing and site, building pad, uh, pad 1, edit type. The thickness of it, as mentioned, we want it to be 200. So I'll go with edit. And I'm going to change the thickness to 200 millimeters. Okay. And we want it to be exactly inside the foundation wall and below our grade, so I'm going to draw a rectangle from this corner to this corner. And level 1, on level 1 we have the slab which is 150, the building pad is going to be below that, so I need to offset it by negative 150 and then make it here. Let's see it on section. This is our building pad. This is our floor, which is 150. This is building pad, which is uh, 200 millimeters offset by negative 150. So it's right below the floor. And this is where the topography is going to uh, basically end. And we're going to have a level which is ready to pour the concrete off the floor. I'm going to go with TW, let's close some inactive views, reset the view here. Okay, uh, now let's make it look more like the section that we have here. Now that we are done with the topography part, I want to select this topography. I want to permanently hide it because we don't want to see it, we just want to see our main elements, right? 
So I'm going to right click, hide in view element. We have another topography here. Right click, hide in view element. Okay. And I'm going to add some dimensions. For instance, uh, this 500. So we're going to make sure that everything is good. I'm going to go with DI from here to here. Uh, that is our linear foundation slab. I'm going to add all these dimensions, 400 till the bottom of the steel, 450 till the top of the concrete. So from here to here, it's 450. From here to the bottom of the column, it's 400. 610 is the width of the concrete part there, and 1400 is the foundation. That is all true. 200 is our linear slab, and the thickness of the foundation is 350. So that's all correct. That's all the dimensions we need here. Uh, let's save the project. We are good with our foundation part. Uh, on the next video, we're going to continue with modeling the walls. Uh, I want to just quickly go back to my site plan. Uh, the exterior reference plane that we just used to modify the topo, we don't need it. Feel free to erase them. But we still want to keep the reference plane that shows the boundary of the project and that the ones that show the setback as well. I would like to mention again that all the design and drawing rights of this project belongs to Mr. Yase Gorka and uh, we will continue in the next videos. Uh, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe for more videos.